I've come to system thinking multiple times throughout the decades. The two most memorable probably being the first via um, Stafford Beer's platform for change in the 70s, and the second one by chance happening across an article in Scientific American and finding out that, that Stella ran on my Mac and that uh, introduced me to system dynamics and I was completely hooked. Though as time evolved, it seemed as though I developed a perspective that systems thinking was just a very not grown up, not very grown up version of system dynamics. And even though that was the perspective, I still was rather bothered by why it was that we needed so many models and methods that all claimed to be systems thinking when systems thinking seemed to be such a foundational concept so universally applicable. And it wasn't until I ran into Michael C. Jackson's systems thinking creative holism for managers that that I had a framework that seemed to put things in perspective and make a lot of sense. So I'd like to sort of unfold that framework in the, in the next couple of minutes. And maybe it makes sense to you and maybe it doesn't though um, from the perspective that it made a lot of sense to me. The, the first dimension of this is, is considering a, the system itself and whether the system is simple or complex. A simple system being something that you could imagine actually designing, engineering, and building. A complex system being one that is, is so complex that you can't imagine building it. It's something that, that sort of evolves over time. And the best that you could possibly hope for is to learn and understand that system to an extent. So on one dimension, it it is systems and whether the system is simple or complex. The second dimension has to do with the participants or stakeholders who are associated with that the system and the participants are considered to be unitary, pluralist or coercive. Unitary being that that they're relatively well aligned in their beliefs and values and interests and so they're pretty well lined up and they agree on things. Pluralist in that the participants are not so well aligned, though for particular instances or objectives they can come to an agreement and, and, and be lined up on things so that they can collectively pursue a solution. Coercive meaning that the stakeholders are of very differing value systems and beliefs and will probably never agree on anything, even in particular instances, so that they're not likely to to come together to agree sufficiently on a solution or a single approach for dealing with a situation. So within these two dimensions, if you're talking about a simple system where the, the participants are well aligned, you approach that situations in that context with what's labeled as hard systems thinking, and that's operations research or systems analysis or systems engineering. Very, very scientific approaches to understanding and dealing with the situation. Though when you get into more complex systems, when the participants are, are well aligned. It's uh, dynamic systems thinking, things such as system dynamics or cybernetics, general systems theory, viable systems model. Those types of approaches are likely to produce meaningful results in the context of unitary complex systems. When the participants are pluralist, whether it be a simple or a complex system, Soft systems thinking seems to be the a type of approach likely to produce meaningful results in that context, and that's idealized design, appreciative inquire, inquiry, soft systems methodology itself. And there are so there are multiple methods 
which are applicable within this context, though specifically methods which are more applicable in this context and the methods employed in these contexts are not likely to produce meaningful results in the pluralist, simple, or complex context. When you end up being in a, in a coercive, dealing in a context where the participants are coercive and a simple system, the emancipatory systems thinking approaches, primarily critical systems, heuristic and team synergy, are the types of approaches which allow one to pursue developing something that that promotes fairness amongst the stakeholders, even though you'll never find, you're highly unlikely to find a well-defined approach to simply dealing with the situation. You have to understand the context that you're dealing with, and fairness is is the best that you're likely to be able to achieve. And if you're dealing with coercive stakeholders in a complex context, postmodern systems thinking, attempting to promote diversity within the context is about what you're going to end up with, or the best that you're likely to be able to achieve. And critical systems thinking is a conceptual approach to saying, Whatever method is appropriate to the context is is what you should apply. And within any any particular situation, the context could be different, and you could have multiple situations in the same organization where, with regard to that particular context, the participants are in fact different and the system is different than it would be if you were trying to address some situation in a different part of the organization. So it's, it's pursuing an approach to dealing with a situation which is most likely to provide understanding and a movement forward based upon that understanding of the context that you have to deal with. So it was, in fact, and I, and I would recommend Jackson's book to you. If, if you're interested in, in having a very broad, expansive awareness, the book profiles multiple methods in each one of these categories, provides a, a somewhat of a summary description of that particular method or methods within that category. And I found it to be a uh, a very thought-provoking piece of work, and it's it's there are places online where you can download the PDF. Um, so I hope that this has in fact been informative and helpful, and I'll see you in another video. Well, yes, in another video. Bye.